Hello viewer, I, my name is Quinn and I just made a quick video here to show Glow, which is a little project I've been working on for the last few weeks. Um, Glow is an IoT Raspberry Pi based uh, lighting, ambient lighting, home decor, whatever you want to call it, art piece thing with a little twist that it's connected to the internet and has some smarts behind it so we can also do some interesting things with it. Um, the fundamental idea came from we had an engagement party a little while ago and we went out to the party supply store and bought these little Chinese lanterns and hung them from our ceiling. They came with a little piece of fishing wire you hung them from and I was thinking well, it'd be kind of cool to throw an LED in there and you know control it with some smarts and, and see what we can do with it. So that's where the idea came along. So. The idea of the Project Glow is to make an open sourced Raspberry Pi IoT, like I was saying, based um, smart system. So it's just kind of something, you know, it's just ambient lighting, kind of artsy, kind of just cool to have in your house. Um, but then also has some interesting twists on it, what we can do with the information that we can learn from the outside world and your house and everything else. So. Uh, I'll talk about, it's kind of a little overview, I'll talk about the hardware a little bit and then talk about the software. Um, like I said, it's all open source, all the software, all the hardware and everything is described on Hackster.io. Um, so you can actually build one yourself, it's pretty simple. Um, a lot of the stuff I say, you don't necessarily need to know, um, or you can put it together not knowing it and then you know go back and dive into whatever you wish. So. The basic idea here is just that you have these lanterns. Um, these are paper, minor paper. There's also, I've seen ones that are made of like material, like some kind of cloth or something, um, and uh, various other um, makes of these. Now, you can do whatever you want. Um, you can use like a frosted um, vase or something, say, you have like, you know, different sizes or something. And you can put the LEDs inside of those and put them on a table and, and do the same thing. Obviously, anything that you can put an LED in, you can essentially do this with. Um, the basic setup I have here is that there's an LED in each one. It's a multicolor common anode uh, RGB LED. So there's four pins coming off it there. One for each color, RGB, red, green, blue. And then one for the, the power. Um, these are connected to these cables. My beautiful electrical tape job there that <laughs> holds... The cable to the to the globe. Um, each cable has four wires in it and they run up to the ceiling and then come down over here to my bookshelf where normally I have books in front of this but so we can see what's going on I removed them. So this is the brains of the operation right here. This is a Raspberry Pi 2 running Windows IoT so it's essentially running Windows 10. Um, pretty simple setup here is just power it's just USB uh, this is a Wi-Fi adapter, so on the back here you have USB ports. This is just a Wi-Fi adapter, so we can connect the internet. And then these are your GPIO pins. Um, this header over here is connecting the power and ground to the chip. This is connecting uh, SPI, which is a simple hardware protocol. That the way we talk to this chip over here, I'll talk about in a second. And then this is connecting just a few more GPIO pins that we use for um, two other purposes for controlling chips. So this is essentially a computer. It's running all the logic. It's running the program. It's what we talk to over Wi-Fi and internet and local network. Um, so an interesting side note about LEDs, as you can see up here, the LEDs are changing colors. Now, the LEDs actually have three colors. They're red, green, and blue. Um, the way you get an LED to dim is that you actually turn it on and off really fast. So if you want 50% red, you want red at like, you know, 50% bright intensity. Um, you turn it on and off half the time on, half the time off, but really fast. And your eye just perceives it as a dimmed red. You can see the ball over there as yes. oh, it was red. So the way that you make any other color combination is that you combine the two colors, obviously. You know, red and blue make purple, like the ball up here. So if I want, you know, red at 50% and blue at 75%, I just modulate those two colors until I get the color I want. It's actually kind of tricky to do. Um, and one of the points of Glow is I wanted it to be really smooth and, and flowy, if, if I can say the word flowy. Um, I wanted it to be 
animated and not hard and harsh transitions and such. So all the software switching between programs and everything is all very smooth and it's all animated. Um, and that's some to do with the PWM chip I'm using, which I'll show you now, and some to do with the software that I wrote, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So it's kind of hard to see this guy. I have this speaker set up against it to kind of prop it up, and I'll try to put some more light on it so we can, hopefully the camera will get a good view of it. Um, so this is a Texas Instruments chip that is the PWM, like I was saying. So the PWM is, I think it's pulse wave modulation. Essentially, the little black chip in the center there, the one that's half covered by that white cable, um, that's the PWM. And you can see around the outside, there's the little, the cables are plugged in. There's a red wire, green wire, and a yellow wire, and then there's a black wire in the back. You can see on the top one up there. I'll put a little more light on, maybe it's better. Um, those, each of the little pins on the side there, those holes, is one individual pin we can control. So since there's three colors in the LED, there's three connections to the board plus the power, and that's how we get the different colors. So this chip is talking to the Raspberry Pi here over an interface called SPI, which is a uh, pretty standard hardware interface. Um, it's just essentially telling it what colors to produce. Um, what Well, it's telling it what each channel should be at. And then the chip over here is responsible for modulating the power on each of the channels to make it change the different colors in the LEDs. There's a lot more about that um, in the Hacks Dio project. Um, there's a blackout pin on the SPI board also that is needed for obviously blacking out the lights if you just want to kill them all, like turn them all off. Um, and then there's also a latch pin which is required to set the colors after you set it. So now I'm going to show you real quick what the software side of this looks like. Don't share my password though. <laughs> so this is all open source. Um, like I was saying, it's Visual Studio 2015, whatever. Um, this is one program that runs along among all these. So the program running here on the desktop, which will capture better when it's fuller, um, runs on phones, runs on tablets, runs on whatever. Um, it's also the exact same program running on the Raspberry Pi over there. Uh, it's, it's magic of Windows Universal apps. Um, so the basics of the software here is, like I was saying earlier, the whole system was designed to be kind of smooth and animated and flowy, you know. Um, so I guess if we go back to the code, the basics we have here is, um, so we have the Windows IoT LED driver, which is a project I created, which is an abstraction from the Glow software of how to talk to the board. So it, it gives you essentially some L, like LED objects and a controller, and you associate the LED objects to the controller, and then you can call animate on the LEDs, and you just say animate, you know, red to full, blue off, green off in five seconds with a linear animation. And then it will take care of doing all the animation for you. So um, animation and everything to do it correctly is, is a little tricky. Um, talking to the board over there is a little tricky. So if you just, you know, grab this project and use the external interfaces on it, you can create a controller um, by just creating a new object, creating uh, LEDs by just creating new objects, associate them with the controller, and then you can just call animate on them and they'll animate. And everything works magically and correctly and it's all abstracted away and easy. So that's the Windows IoT LED driver project down here, which is actually its own repo. And then the rest of this is all Glow. Um, there's a few projects here. The only reason for that is just for deployment. So this is the one that actually runs on the Pi, and this is the one that runs as the app on everything else. That's just for deployment. Essentially, most of the code is in this common project here, which is just shared between the two. So this is really building one DLL, one executable that's being ran on tablet, desktop, phone, and the IoT, um, whatever else too in the future, like Xbox or HoloLens or <laughs> whatever you whatever you please. Um, so like I was saying, the software side of it here, and this is the user interface, what it looks like essentially. Um, you have your different programs over here and then your, you know, whatever the program does. So this is a random color one. So that's what's currently on right now. It's just randomly um, picking colors and changing to them. Um, for example, though, it doesn't have to be fast. Like if I change the minimum time for a color change to be zero and the maximum time for a color change to be zero, then all the color changes will be instantaneous. So now you'll see 
that there's a period between changes, but they pop. Like, so it's what it's doing is it's randomly picking each of these values based on the sliders. So it's randomly picking a time between changes per ball and randomly picking how long each change takes. So now if I also change the time between changes down to zero, <laughs> uh, they start to go crazy because they're just always changing instantly and quickly. Um, it's kind of fun. You can play with a whole bunch of different stuff, make it a whole bunch of different designs. Like I said, my vision of it was to have it always kind of smooth and flowy. So if I turn these things back up, then you know it. You can even make them higher so that it you really don't even notice the color transitions, but they're just happening. So now going back to what I said about the smarts. So some of the kind of other cool things you can do is that um, you can see up here I have a clock mode. Let's see if I can get the focus. Mm. So it's not actually much to look at on the UI, but you can see that when I turn clock on, it turned both of these on. So what it's going to do now is the Pi will cycle between these two programs. So every 30 seconds, it will switch whatever programs are enabled, and it will just run through them in a list. So if I want to force clock on, I just turn random off, and now it's the only thing on, so it runs. So what clock does is clock will show the current time on the balls. Um, I'll refocus here in a second. Based on each ball is a time unit. So the ball in the center there is seconds. Let me get closer. It doesn't seem to be very happy. The ball in the center here is sec is sorry is yeah seconds. So you can see it, you can actually see it changing. Um, essentially, it takes the color spectrum, um, red, green, blue, and all the colors you can make with those three colors, um, and runs through them. So it takes if you imagine that taking red, green, blue paints, smearing them together in a line, then you'll have like a rainbow. And then it divides that up into whatever it needs to for seconds at 60 seconds. So every second it will change the color going through the rainbow. So if you know the spectrum, you can actually look at this and figure out what time it is. So this one's seconds. Um, one of them's changing slightly slower. Maybe this one is minutes. And then there's hours, days, and um, day of the week, which obviously would change really slow because it doesn't change very quickly. Um, but see, so that's kind of an example of now I have this home decor lighting ambient thing, but if I look at it and I know something about it, I can actually drive some interesting information from it. Um, so that's clock. There aren't a whole bunch of these other ones implemented. I have weather implemented, so based on your current location, it will show weather. Weather is based on the different balls tell you like um, the temperature from red to blue, um, red being hot, blue being cold is one of the balls, the current conditions. So if it's cloudy, it's white. If it's rainy, it's blue. If it's sunny, it's yellow. You can see we got a lot of blues. One's like atmospheric pressure, um, some other things. I don't know. I haven't translated which ball's which, so I don't actually know. I don't know if you can see the refocus is actually a rainy day here. So there's a lot of blue because of all the rain. Um, and then the last mode is you know, just some fun things to play with this manual color mode where you can, you can turn them all off. Oops, I didn't quite get them all off. Um, so if I just change, I can change the colors individually based on, you know, whatever I'm touching and all the balls are each one of these little things. I know it's not focusing very well. <laughs> Let's see focus. But you get the idea of it. So, I mean, the possibilities are kind of endless. Once you have the system set up where you can pretty much have a computer computer communicate to the Pi, which will change the lights. Um, one kind of prototype -y thing I've owned, I had set up, see if it'll work, is this camera mode. Oh, cameras are cameras. Where whatever is centered in the camera view, so I'm trying to get that red book, it'll change the color of the top left. You see the top one, left one, or I guess the kind of center left, it's kind of going red. So it's changing the color of that ball to whatever the camera is looking at. Theoretically, you'd want to do something a little more interesting, like, you know, have it, um, have it change color based on, have it all the colors change based on different factors and such, but um, that's pretty much all we have for now. So. Like I said, the software is all open source. This app is open source. This app also runs on phone. It's on the Windows phone or the Windows store. So you can see if I kind of collapse it down, that's essentially what it looks like on a phone. This isn't gonna, maybe this is too dark. There you go, it's better. 
So this is what it looks like on a phone. It just re you know, reflows nicely. Um, yeah. One of the other interesting ones I was going to implement was weather camera. So I'm going to try to make the Raspberry Pi grab a picture of a weather cam from like an elementary school or something. You know, they usually set up cameras to look at the, the weather. Um, make the Pi automatically grab that image because it can talk to the internet, you know, every like five minutes or so. And update the color on the balls to be like the most prominent colors in the image. So if it's looking at a sunset and then we have these nice big windows where you see the sunset and then you have the balls up here, the balls will be matching the color of the sunset. Um, I mean, the possibilities are really endless. The way the system's set up is that you can add, you know, as many programs here as you want. You can keep adding these and then you just write the program. Um, essentially, it runs on the Pi. Um, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So let's quick look at Glow. Um, if you're interested in any more information or details, check out the hackster.io page or tweet me or whatever you wish. Thanks for watching.